Uh, hi everyone and welcome to Developer Circle, a global network of developers community from Facebook. Uh, we are a Kyiv-based learning community for developers, by developers, and this is space uh, uh, to connect and bond with each other over technology and uh, catalyze our learning process uh, by sharing a very useful idea and stay tuned and uh, don't miss any of our future events. Uh, join uh, Facebook Developer Circle, uh, community groups, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, this event is going to live as Pi and AI uh, series of deep learning meetups, uh, 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 which are uh, uh, independently hosted by community groups worldwide and uh, big funds for supporting and uh, um, help uh, for this event to Andrew and G and his team uh, and also deep learning community. Uh, today we will talk about uh, Facebook project Habitat and uh, where artificial intelligent agents live. Uh, welcome on our virtual stage, our amazing speaker, Alexander Maximetz, research engineer in Facebook uh, AI research team. Hi everyone, my name is Alexander and I'm working as research engineer in Facebook AI research. Um, just to give a little bit of introduction, what is Facebook AI research? Facebook AI research is a part of Facebook that have two sub organizations. One is more related to uh, AI for products. Another one is a purely research um, scientific uh, organization. That's the, the organization I'm part of. So, our goal is like to learn more about cutting edge AI and uh, um, publish papers and open source project to bring our AI uh, community and uh, advancement forward. So I will not talk about products we have. I will talk about um, scientific tasks, about um, advancement and uh, less about Facebook products. So don't expect the tasks I'm talking here uh, part of Facebook product agenda. It's mostly about research and pu published in papers and uh, looking for future. Um, so we're going to talk about habitat where artificial intelligence live. And before that, we want to talk what is embodied AI because habitat is related to embodied AI. It's, a it's framework, research framework uh, platform for embodied AI. Um, in nutshell, uh, embodied AI are robots and AI system. So there, uh, there is big shift going on right now. When we have all this, in, call it internet AI, where we have static data sets like ImageNet with all these images and labels of what is on the image, and we train this, uh, this uh, we train machine learning uh, models with this perception that it's static. In embodied AI, it's, uh, it looks on the system as environment and an agent that is acting in this environment. And there is some additional signals. Like, for example, here we have a robot that is trying to, um, to go into building and, for example, rescue somebody from the fire. And we have communication in natural language. Here is a smoke in any room around. And then um, this agent is expected to act intelligently and save people. While other possible AI assistant uh, tasks are when you wear AR glasses and you want to know where you left your keys and your uh, a, a, AI assistant can say, hey, you left it on a coffee table or you are in kitchen and you want to cook something and you can ask like, what is a recipe of guacamole? And it just appear on your screen. So this uh, AI assistant is with you. It's aware of what's happening around and can help you. While here, it's an agent that is acting in the environment and communicate with you. So this shift is happening. It's called embodied AI. And uh, if we'll talk a little bit more about terminology, where it's coming from, why it's important, why we, we, we want to, to use this kind of model to, to, to learn and research. Because there is an embodiment hypothesis, that idea that intelligence emerged in interaction uh, of the agent with the environment and as a result of sensor, sensor motor activity. So the way how we learn the world, we think it's 
can be part of AI. And uh, that's what embodiment is about. The model that or agent that can control its body and do actions in the real world. This is a from six lesson from babies, what we can learn how to um, how to push AI forward. So what is com common theme in embodiment and what are common pains? First is like horror doesn't exist sometimes like in, in wide uh, range. So it's hard to get robots that are capable of doing this and it's very expensive. Uh, in reality, these robots are slow. Sometimes they can, it can be dangerous to do any experiments with them. It is expensive and it's hard to reproduce and control. So if you see some results in paper, it's hard to reproduce on your own premises because you need the same robot, same setup and so on. What is common solution? Common solution is seem to real. So imagine we pre-train our robot in simulation and then we fine tune in reality. So on the left, you see habitat and the room and there is a robot called Lockabot, low cost bot that universities are using as a first to go robot. It has a Roomba base and camera and everything. And it shows like, and, and it was trained in this simulation, so this simulated room. And then the same agent that learns to consume depth and RGB input is is um, is running in in reality. This is like thirty times faster than reality. So you can imagine how slow what was this navigation. So this is a common solution. What people do to to make uh, to iterate on agents and then uh, have success with robots. Um, well said like hardware is like expensive and not exist, there are some breakthroughs in this direction as well. Recently, Hello Robot appear, which is give you, can you give a sense that why we think that embodied AI research should have, can have future applications. So this is a robot you can buy right now uh, from ex Google and ex Georgia Tech faculty. And as you see, it has like a Roomba base and then and then gripper and telescope, telescopic hand, which can be pretty handy at home. And all this required to have agent that can, or models that can understand what's happening, have a planning of the action. And then this robot can be really useful at your home. And I think that uh, that's where our models and tasks and everything uh, come come to reality in your home. So what was past world before Habitat? And when I say world, it means like embodied AI domain. So we had a third different like 3D assets, like how this, like, and uh, then we have number of simulators. Some of them were attached to particular assets. And then we had a number of tasks that were researched in papers, like embodied question answering, language grounding, and so on. And all these were based again on these different simulators. So field were very fraction and it was hard to reproduce and hard to, hard to iterate because you cannot uh, use knowledge from one simulator to another. And some of these simulators have flaws and so on. So what is our vision? Our vision is to create analogy of ImageNet Coco VQA for embodied AI, where you can focus not on creating like simulator or like 3D assets, but you can focus on actually solving the problem, solving the task and making sure that if you solve it, it can be transferred and used for uh, different applications. That's what ImageNet brought to the field. It gets a benchmark where people can just focus on computer vision and using deep, deep neural nets for computer vision and just get to this 95% from uh, 16 or, or, or what was it at the beginning. We want to create this benchmark for embodied AI and make community think less about engineering and uh, other not very research related things. Well, what is our answer? Our answer is Habitat, a simulation platform for embodied AI, which, can, which contains from separate uh, several parts. First, like we have Habitat Sim, which is a core, which is a simulator. I will show you the capabilities of it in, in a minute. And this supports generic data set support. So it can load any data you can see here uh, into this one simulator. 
And then we have Habitat Lab on top, that is have definition of this task, metrics, and all things that community agree on to evaluate the tasks, how to evaluate the task. So, so Habitat C is a uh, efficient high-performing simulator that is able to simulate photorealistic environments. This is all scans of real, real, real houses with a speed exceeding 10,000 frame per, uh, 10, frame per second, which is while well, previous efforts were like on an order of magnitude of hundreds. So then if you talk about Habitat Lab, Habitat Lab is uh, exper is experiment framework with uh, where we have defined tasks like point goal navigation, object navigation when you need to go to a particular object, uh, and others. So I will talk about them in, in more details uh, about all these different slides. Um, so what 3D assets does Habitat support? We support Matterport 3D open data sets that exist already, it's like 90, 90 multi-floor houses. What is interesting is that it has semantic labeling. It means that each object in this in, in the, this photorealistic scans is uh, labeled with particular label, like the table, chair, or, or, or something else. We have replica. Replica is near photorealistic rooms. It's 18 rooms uh, that were released by Facebook Reality Lab together with Habitat. And it's high quality meshes with uh, much advanced semantic labeling and where each instance is labeled. You, I, I, I will show that, that you can feel the quality of this data set. And then we have scan networks like, on larger scale, but quality is a little bit behind compared to Matterport and Replica. And we have Gibson data sets from Stanford which is 572 buildings, which is have it's a scan of realistic houses, but no semantic labels. So you don't know, you, you cannot train your model that this is a chair or this is a wall. It just all look like uh, you are going through the house, but no, no labels provided. When we talk about replica, this is high quality 3D reconstructions. Um, you, you can see this is a simulation of, of the room that was scanned by FRL team. And you can check how detailed it was. And all this is like real objects, real position. It's not 3D render or something. Uh, I mean, it's not 3D rendered objects or rec rec it's realistic scans of the object. And this is another one. So this has like meshes with this have labels. Now it in label mode, and uh, it have multiple floors, and, and segmentation is pretty detailed. Here I'll show you two videos. One video is from scan from simulation, and one is from reality. And uh, I would just ask you, can you tell me where is reality, where is it, where is the simulation? Um, yeah, in the format we have right now, I cannot hear your answers, but. Answer is on the left is reality because we have lag here and some other details that can show its, its reality. But it's pretty close. Um, okay, so when you say that okay, we have these fancy rooms, but what if I want to have my environment and train it on my environment on my house? You can bring your own scan. You can virtualize the reality. There is a Matterport cameras that give you an, an opportunity to scan and make a 3D, um, 3D virtual environment from your home or from your uh, lab or whatever. This is a process of recreating this 3D environment in, in simulation. And this is simulated 3D environment right now. And then you can go around, move in continuous space, and you can expect it will generalize to reality, navigation tasks, and so on. Mm -hmm. As we have environment scans, we have ob also object scans. So there's an object data sets like YCD or IKEA, which you can import into environment and use them for the tasks you want to set up. What actually, Habitat can simulate different scenarios. It can render, it can emulate physics, uh, simulate physics, 
different agents, robots, um, multi-agent support, and even human input VR. So you can expect that human is connected to habitat and then you have a robot there and they can interact into this virtual, virtual world and do things. What task are we supporting? First, we support like the navigation task and navigation use cases. Then, as I mentioned, like rigid body support. This is, power, this is powered by Bullet now, and uh, articulated robot support. So, if you want to define some tasks where you have a robot involved with constraints and joints and everything. You can do it. Then you can expect this to run on a real robot with the same model, for example, with the same type of robot. Key contribution of Habitat is that it's over 50 times faster than previous efforts. And just to show it visually here, this is how 3D, the previous effort that was also mod simulating how this and this is Habitat Sim with one thread and then Habitat Sim that is running in five processes in parallel. And you can achieve like 11,000 frames per second for navigation purposes. So to talk more a little bit what tasks are defined and what we study and about the research efforts on the Habitat, uh, we're switching to the task. So when we say task, it means that tasking in from academic perspective where you have data set you have a, a metric and then multiple groups can try to solve it and compete with each other uh, it doesn't mean that we need to solve it the way that it for sure will be applicable in reality but definitely this task requires some understanding uh, from your model or from your agent uh, usually so the good task is the one that is pushing embodied ai forward and motivate to create better approaches and, f and smarter model and, and so on. So one of the tasks is point, point goal navigation, the first that we started with. In this setup, your agent, your model have access to depth, which is very important because it can tell you if your object will collide, if your agent will collide, he'll move forward or not. Then RGB input, like RGB camera, and then GPS and compass. and and it's showing where the, the where the goal is. So each time you move, you know exactly where the goal is relative to the agent during this navigation. And here is an example of navigation of our our, our agent. It was colliding in the beginning, and then it's figured out how to go. So it's powered by machine learning um, agent, which doesn't have access to uh, to top down map. Top down top down map is here only for uh, for for. Visual, visual visualization. So just to stop it here. So before Habitat, in this photorealistic environments, um, it was possible to train agents for 5 million steps in, in the house. Uh, and if you will take a classical approach, which is SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping, which is using classical computer vision to navigate into 3D environment. It was achieving like 60%, I would say, SPL is like some kind of success metric. So it was 60% of success in this case. Well, uh, when, this mo when reinforcement and machine learning models were trained to 5 million, so to, when the, they were not able to, to beat it. But with Habitat, you can scale more and the first paper we trained it for 70 millions, and we were able to show that then reinforcement learning agents can be better than the classical one in this setup of the task. But when we tried to scale even more, we were able to scale it to five to 2.5 billions, which is similar to 80 years of walking in the house, non-stop walking in the house. So our agent have seen like 80 years of navigating experience. And this is fascinating. Um, and as a result, we solve this point goal navigation problem uh, in, in this setup again. And this is an example of uh, this agent. This has near perfect navigation. It just doesn't collide on average and 
Yeah, navigate just seamlessly. What is architecture behind this? We try not to be, we try to use like the most, um, I would say, common on the straightforward navigation, straightforward architecture and show that we can train it with a scale we have. So our architectures have CNN or ResNet mo mo model to, to consume RGB plus depth and we call it like perception module. And then we have a policy, which is three layer LSTM. This receiving hidden state, which is, we can, you can read it as memory, previous action that agents were taken. And then this policy produce the next action, as well as it takes GPS and compass. So input, so where, where is the goal? And without map, as you can see. So you can check this paper, it's really interesting. And it was scaled by uh, the centralized distributed uh, PPO, the proximity policy optimization method in a, in RL. So idea is that we have number of RL workers that are training, producing and training in parallel, and then they are sharing their gradient updates between them. So this gradient sharing is synchronized. That means that experience um, the average in the gradient vectors and uh, they can like, train in a scale much, much faster. All details in this paper, actually, if you are interested. Uh, other interesting task that is not solved yet is object navigation. When you ask to go to sofa and you are spawned in unseen house and you need to find this sofa. When we talk about this task, it's usually is in unseen house. So your agent has never been in this house, never seen it. It doesn't mean that you can just memorize where is something and just go, go there. No, oh, in, in evaluation and testing time, you are in, in, in the houses that you have never seen. And so one task is like go to room, room navigation, we call it. Um, and another one is instruction following. When you have uh, instruction from the, from the person in in the text and you need just to follow it to get to, to the point you go to out to the brown door and then there is embodied question answering task where you like ask like what is color is a tv stand and you need to find this tv stand check the color and answer the question and produce a reward like dark blue for example so we have good progress uh, our collaborators have a good progress in instruction following tasks. So this one was originated outside of Habitat and then we we'll, our collaborators moved it into Habitat in continuous space. And here is an instruction. So your agent kind of use this instruction as an input and then just follow them. Follow them. And this is a navigation based on um, neural net uh, agent. So it's already understanding these words and going through. It's not, it's not perfect. It's still like have a, a, a room to go, it's, but it's already um, doing pretty, pretty well. Another, um, and, and another effort is like sim to real transfer. We uh, recreated the room in simulation and had this room in, in reality and then try to train our agent with different um, with different parameters in our system in Habitat and check what of them getting similar results in reality. So actually, in, in this project, the correlation coefficient matrix was built that where we have reality success and simulator success. And with different parameters in simulation, we want to see where success in simulation is equal to success in reality. So in this paper, we were interested in approaches that where sim simulation and reality setup gives a similar success metrics and try to learn from there what is the best uh, simulation setup. So for example, that brought us to the conclusion that in our simulation platform, we have sliding on. So it means that when you uh, 
when you collide with a wall, you're not stopping, but you're actually sliding. And this is coming from a gaming engine, en engine because we want a um, smooth experience for, for gamers. And that's why this is a default version of simulation where you just slide during the walls, uh, through the wall. And this is not the case for reality. When you smash into the wall, you're not sliding. It. And we learned that disabling this makes learning much, much harder, but also it improves sim to simulation to reality transfer. Um, so for next tasks, we disabled, uh, we disabled um, sliding for future. Another project is episodic memory. This is a really interesting one from our collaborators from Georgia Tech and Oregon University. So imagine you are given a tour of friends' new apartment. So you just, you walk through the house and then after you are done, you ask questions. So this is an example of navigation you may have. And then in the end, you ask like, can you answer a simple question? What, what, what was the, uh, was there a couch in the living room? Um, how many pillows were on it? Can you find your way back to the bathroom? So this is what the kind of motivation behind this research. Um, so, and the question, how we can, um, how we can learn and memorize what had happened during navigation and then be in better place to answer this question and have representation of 3D space. So coming from egocentric observation to top-down semantic map. So here's like top, ground truth top-down semantic map. And the approach that was chosen is a special memory when features from egocentric is projected uh, on the map and are saved with a map during navigation. There's a lot of tiny details here, but the main thing is that it's getting features from 2D and using a project to map approach and differential projection and then save it into spatial memory and use this special memory for decoding of, uh, for example, semantic map. Here is a prediction of semantic map during navigation. That's pretty well. It looks pretty well. We still have errors. You can see it's like not as sharp uh, edges as here, but in high level, that's pretty fascinating. And this can be used to answer that question that we were asked at the beginning. And it was compared with other approaches and a reasonable boost and possible downstream tasks that can leverage is of course, like object navigation and body question answering and others. So, Future, some other tasks that we are thinking, we are thinking go or um, move to task of not only navigation, but also rearrangement of, of the objects. For example, you have a room and you want your agent to clean it, to clean the kitchen and put everything into sink um, or wash it, I don't know. So here is like human doing this, but what if um, there will be a model agent that can do this and then we can connect it to the gripper and make it work in reality or like put it into the drawer. So some subtask on the kitchen you can perform. And um, what future task are we looking in is like AR as question answering. That's what I told to tell you at the beginning. Virtual agents that are living on your smart glasses and taking virtual actions into uh, talk, and talking to the human in nature language. So, so communicating with you, you can ask them to, to memorize or to do something related to, to real world you have seen through, through the glasses. Um, we are wrapping up here. Um, I wanted to say that the best way to check, how we are checking that uh, the task is valuable and that uh, reasonable progress achieved and that it's comparable with with other research groups. We organize challenge each year um, on CVPR. And this year, 2020, we organized challenge that had two tasks. One is point nav navigation without GPS and compass. So you actually was given tasks like go five meter north, 
three meter west relative to the start. And we ask participants to navigate to, to this goal. Well, we have noisy activations. So it's like turning can lead to moving and jittering of your object position. And we have like the noise in the cameras as well. So using this, we try to make this task more realistic to the reality and, and harder compared to previous point nav that was solved. Uh, and we had object navigation. This is semantic navigation task that I just mentioned. Goal is like find stool, access to RGB and depth camera. And we also have access to odometer kind of GPS and compass. And you need to find any object from this category. So, and stop with one meters near, nearby. All actions are, mm, that uh, our robots are taken are discrete. It's like uh, turn left and right, move forward, stop. And for here, we, for this task, we can also move up, move down to, to, to be able to, to look into the larger objects and re recognize them. Um, yeah, so it's invitation for you to first, if you want to compete and try to your um, try, try your abilities, you can um, now send your uh, send your submissions to leaderboard. They are open, and we use it as a state of the art reference. So you can just go to leaderboard, check what is the top performer in this task, and say, hey, I'm better, or like, and now I can understand what is the baseline I need to start with. Or for next year, I invite you to participate with us and uh, to to, com to compete and win the challenge. Um, all this is team effort. We have a number of core team engineers and risk scientists. We also have a number of collaborators and past contributors as well. Now, Habitat is open source with MIT license. It has like two repos. One is Habitat C, another one is Habitat Lab. And you can use this code for commercial or research purposes. And yeah, I'm really proud that we are developing it in open manner and each hour commit is actually on GitHub. Even like functionality that we have in progress, it's still on GitHub. It's like our primary repo we are working with. Um, and uh, recently we released a number of tutorials that have videos and collabs about Habitat. Collab is a notebook that you can run in uh, in your browser without installing anything. This is powered by Google. And so if you want to take a look, play with it, you you are welcome and it's easier to do it than before. Our website is aihabitat.org. Go and uh, check there. And uh, now we have like some minutes, I will show you one of these uh, call-ups. Yeah, so this is collab created by Harsh, one of our collaborators from Georgia Tech. And it shows you how to set up new tasks for academia. It means that it will have a lot of code just to make it reproducible and to make it sustainable and so on. But doesn't mean you need to do all this just to have some easier prototype. But idea is like you have initial arrangement of furniture and you want have a final arrangement of furniture. Imagine like uh, you have a picture of your ideal clean apartment uh, or top-down map. And then you go away from your home and say to uh, robot like, hey, make, make it clean. And your robot is taking your clean version of your mapping of your, of your apartment and start from initial arrangement and move furniture and objects around the way that you want it to have for clean apartments. So, but this task this will be like technical details. We will dive it a little bit for, I don't know, three, four minutes, and then we'll continue with, with questions. Um, so for this task the definition, we need to uh, set up simulator, create new data sets, data set of episodes where you have a lot of this arrangement where you ask agent to, from initial arrangement to the final arrangement. So you need to generate objects position and then have a final arrangement. Uh, really uh, implement grab and release action kind of type in simulator because it's not there because and the, for your task you want to, to have specific this action that is moving object around and create new task and train error legend in the end so this is like installation 
um, here we create some util function to show videos. This is set up in configuration of, of simulator, just path pathing all, all the details to, to initialize it. We initialize it in the room and then we put objects there with random position. And then we add a pointer that you can point and take an object and say, I want to take this object, a particular one. So it will check what is the closest object that is intersecting with this pointer and just grab and release that object. It's all implemented here. Um, and then then you specify task, new task sensors, measurements. Measurements are actually success metrics that are used for training and for evaluation of your agent. I'll just skip through this. And this is an example of, so then we start, uh, then we start training. And when we start training, we, oh, one second. So we will train later. So this is a task, how it looks like. You are going, you, you went to the table, uh, to the chair, you grab it and you move it with it and then you release it on the position you want it. So this is a task actually. And then you set up a RHEL environment that is used for training, a lot of code because this is all new task. This is a, actually, a, this is actually a tutorial that shows like how to develop fully new task that was never before in Habitat because we have already proposed task I talked to you, they're there. You, you can just start training and work with it without any code. And this is, you come up with your own task you want to train. And this is what requires for you to make it reproducible and to release it the way that others can also work on that from other research groups. So here's a training, this training started, and this is an example of one of successful um, object uh, successful agent trajectories. So this is actually by, by train agent, this all actions. I think that's it from my side. I just wanted to show you that you can go online, check this call up, run it and play with it to, to have a sense of what is happening. And it's relatively easy to compare to installing everything locally if you want just to take a look. Okay, I'm good here, Tamara. Do we have questions, maybe? Um, yeah, like we have questions. Um, we have a couple of questions from uh, YouTube. So first is uh, from uh, uh, Matvi Hodovancic, and he asked you, uh, did Boston Dynamics use similar to AI Habitat software? Cannot comment on Boston Dynamics. I don't, I don't know, but well, I know that for sure that they mostly focused on um, on classical approaches to the planning without involving machine learning part. So if you will mm -hmm. check the spot, it will mostly powered by differential equations and no machine learning. They release it for other people to try to use machine learning on top of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have also like second question from uh, Sasha Paz, uh, and he asked, uh, "Can Open AI hide and seek uh, uh, be played on uh, Habitat Sim?" Yeah, that's a very nice question. Um, yeah, it can. It's we don't have set up task for that, but that's exactly like multi agent task that we would like to have, and um, in three D it will be even more interesting, right? Because you can hide on other floor and so on. That's a good idea. Thank you. Uh, also, we have another question from uh, Vadim Poltaratsky. Uh, does an AI agent need a permanent internet connection in order to function? 
Um, actually, no. So th that depends on your like experiment setup. But overall, one of lock. So if you take this locker bot uh, that um, research labs are using for navigation, which is Roomba with a small computer on top, it doesn't need um, internet connection. Overall, you don't need internet connection. You only need if you if your robot is uh, if if you have a system operation system on board, you can just run your agent there. Uh, if you want to have a more powerful uh, server to use for, for your agent, you can use some server on your local network, which is communicating to particular robot. But um, yeah, we expect it to to be able to run our agents on, on the premises of the robot. It sounds great. Uh, also, we have another question from Sasha, and uh, he asked, do you validate your model on real uh, reconstructed uh, rooms and, and houses? Um, so yeah, uh, that's exactly what's happening. So when you take a matter port, which is 90 scenes, uh, that scenes are real houses that were scanned, and like 60 of them are in train set, like 10 of them are in VAL set, and I believe like around 10 is in test set. And all this uh, is like photorealistic scan. So you train it on one, on 60 scenes, and then check it on 10 scenes. Uh, and then the final metric is on other 10 scenes that you even have not seen, um, didn't use for training at all, like to, as for feedback. Um, regarding like testing it on, uh, Maybe personal was also interested if you are testing in real environments. Um, we try to do that. It's pretty time consuming to, for example, for any tasks stated in similar in, in uh, that is created in Habitat to to test it in in, in reality because you need to have like uh, similar type of objects and uh, it's. It takes time to get reasonable metrics and run it multiple times, so you can kind of argue. What I have seen other authors are doing, they just run it on several episodes in reality and show, hey, it looks like it can work or like on 10 episodes and just bring you a rough metric just to say that at least it, it, it makes sense in reality as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question from Vadim. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, is learning looks a lot similar to blockchain uh, flow to me? Does it have anything to do with Tensor? Uh, yeah, so learning is machine learning. It means that we use PyTorch or like you can use uh, TensorFlow uh, that learns. Um, in, yeah, that's into. Sorry, I will give a little bit more details here. So this is reinforcement learning. It means that, that your agent is doing some actions at the beginning, not very smart in the environment, like going into wrong direction. And then your environment giving back a reward that's saying that, hey, um, it looks like you are moving into wrong direction. Your reward is minus 10. And then your agent is learning, okay, with this GPS and compass, state, I should not move in that direction. And, and, and with, and with the, this depth, uh, I should not move in that direction. I should, I should move, try something else. So environment is gi giving a feedback to your agent in the reward, with the reward, and then your agent try, uh, learns to move in into the right direction. And if you have enough episode, it can generalize and learn to interpret the, the signal from GPS and compass and from uh, deep depth where to go. So no, it's not connected to blockchain. It's connected to machine learning, deep learning, PyTorch. That's related to this. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, another question from Sasha. Uh, what robots are you used to validate models? And uh, uh, yeah, what kind of robots so, you use to validate models? So in scene to real paper, we use Lockabot because that's the uh, most affordable setup. Um, now we are thinking our more sophisticated robots, but overall robots research is another domain. So we plan to focus on simulation, but keep track that simulation is transferring to reality and uh, implement things that will make our simulation closer to reality. But what we learned that it's like pretty hard to, to have larger scale training or like evaluation in reality. Um, 
during CPR, there was one challenge, actually two challenges were planned to have a real state as well, real, real face. So it means that you submit your Docker container that is capable of object navigation, and then it's evaluated in Habitat or other simulator. And then this container is used on the robot to navigate in real house. And there are people that are evaluating the metrics of these robots and getting you back. So it's much slower, but you can still run it in reality. Um, yeah, so this is the way how we're going to validate. We're going to participate in these challenges, organize them, and um, use local bot or if more sophisticated robots will be affordable. We'll try to use them as well. Right, thank you for answer. Uh, we have another question from Matvi. Uh, can we have a run uh, a multiply agent system in Habitat? Once again, can we have? Um, like, uh, do you run? Uh... Was it about multi-agent system? So in Habitat, regarding multi-agent, it can be supported from Habitat lab perspective. It's not natively supported by Habitat sim, but you can actually put two objects uh, to two agents and get sensors and get uh, renders from different agent perspective and move, move them simultaneously in the environment. So the same as in physics, you can, Tamara, was it a question about multi-agent? Yeah, it was a question about multi-agent system in Habitat. Uh, and mm -hmm. can you do run? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you can do this. We don't have defined task for you. We know that other collaborators and authors are using Habitat for multi-agent multi um, reinforcement learning experiments. Um, yeah, that's uh, the answer. So you can do define this task on top of Habitat. We don't have something that we have in master branch right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have another question from Sasha. Um, Google is some point of time is also tried to learn to sort object on simulation environment and they not succeed and start from certain learning on real object. Uh, will it may happen with uh, Habitat uh, Sim as well? Mm, that depends on the task, right? Because if you are learning like how to grab the object, it can be a um, very hard task because you cannot simulate physics of, of gripping the object the way as it is in reality. So, but if we are talking about navigation, our studies and papers showing that it can generalize pretty well to reality. Mm, yeah, so what I would say project by project basis. And uh, we can still use like photos, real photos or something else for to make it more uh, attached to reality. Um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for answer. Uh, also, Sergey asked you please to repeat what does the abbreviation CNN in algorithm mean? So when you explain- oh, CNN, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's convolutional neural networks. It's part of, it's some type of neural networks that um, is really good in analyzing pictures and 2D inputs. So actually all this um, recent boom, or not so recent boom with in computer vision with uh, detecting faces, with uh, detecting different objects, all this is based on CNNs, convolutional neural networks. Um, yeah, so you can take a look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so we also have another question from Matvi. Uh, can mm -hmm. we create uh, digital creatures in Habitat to create a form of creature that would be best in moving from one to another floor, for example? Yeah, yeah, we can do this. I, I mean, we can we can create an agent that is going from one floor to another. It's already happening. Um, in terms of creatures. Uh, Maybe Matvi was talking about animal um, motion or like um, mo model animals. That's a little bit harder because for now we are supporting URDF format, the one that is used in robotics to describe what joints move with what constraints. So if you can provide URDF model for 
some creature, you can see how it can move in habitat. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. And we have like last question from Sasha. Uh, maybe you think about converting experience that agent learn to knowledge uh, what uh, can be runs on similar devices. Uh, it's just abstract question like uh, uh, condensed knowledge. Yeah, so again, the uh, goal of this framework first is oh, and habitat and study is to learn the capabilities of the models and, and improve it. Like, as you mentioned, like condensed knowledge or like common sense in, in, in 3D environment, that's exactly what we are looking for as embodied AI um, field. We are not looking to nail one particular problem with a lot of hacks and uh, t tricks on top. We learn. We we are more passionate about like general model that can um, that can learn and have similar behaviors and conclusions and reasoning that human have, and, or maybe better for performing tasks in three D environments in, in with body. Um, so yeah, that's uh, I think semantic map building um, paper is one of that. Like how to have in a navigation create a condensed knowledge about this environment and then use it for navigation, answering questions and number of different tasks. So check that. Tamara? Uh, yeah, sorry, I disconnected mm -hmm. for a while. Uh, so for now it's all questions and uh, you need to pick the best question, uh, question for your choice. We will give small uh, present from uh, Wilbur Circle Kiev to author of this question. Okay, okay. Okay, I'll choose the author of hide and seek question. I really like that one. I'm looking forward for your implementation of the task in Habitat Lab. So if you're interested. Uh, uh, could you repeat, please, which question? Hide and seek. Hide, hide and seek. So, can we can we implement hide and seek in Habitat? Uh huh. Uh, okay, I need to check who is uh... author. Oh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's Sasha Paz, and he asked the uh, Open AI hide and seek uh, can mm -hmm. be played in Habitat. Sim. Okay, so congrats, uh, Sasha Paz. You got a small uh, present from us. Write us in comment and. Uh, Thank you everyone for joining the webinar and big thanks to Alexander Maximet uh, for sharing his uh, exceptional knowledge and uh, very interesting talk, uh, talk about uh, Habitat project. So uh, everyone feel free to join Developer Circle and stay tuned for our future events. Uh, thank uh, everyone for watching us and uh, see you later. Bye-bye. Bye guys, see you.